Andy Johnson, Minnesota State University. We're looking at approaches to reading instruction, and this is the third, the third approach. We're looking at four approaches to reading instruction. This is the third one, reading workshop. Uh, I think it's the best way to teach reading, although we don't really teach reading. We help students develop their ability to create meaning with print, especially in a multi-level classroom. This is the best way to create these uh, uh these uh, situations. Reading workshop contains some or all of the following six elements. There is structure. Students know what to do. You come in, you grab a book, we spend the first couple minutes reading. We do writing so that they know what to expect. There's a routine. Now the beauty of it is students and teachers in classrooms are not standardized products, so reading workshop looks a little bit different in every classroom depending on the teacher, the students, the grade level, etc. In reading workshop, there are many lessons, skills lasting anywhere from three to ten minutes. Nancy Atwell says reading instruction should comprise no more than 20 to 30 percent of the total reading class. That 70 to 80 percent of that class should be reading practice, engaged in real reading for real purposes. Many lessons to cover the skills, comprehension, word identification, whatever, a short mini lesson. Boys and girls, this is how you comprehend the text. Short, because students don't learn by being exposed to a skill once. You teach the skill once, but then you learn it by encountering it many times again, over and over at uh, successively higher levels. So many skills. And the thing about mini lessons, or a skills lesson, is they can be flexible. If you notice, being a good teacher, kid watcher, that some of your students are having trouble with a particular skill, you can say, boys and girls, I'd like these five people to join me at the table. Bing, 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 these five people come down. You do a short guided lesson on a particular skill. Everyone else is reading or doing their thing. They go on back. You don't need these bluebirds and jaybird reading groups. Flexible, flexible. Independent reading, lots and lots of independent reading at the heart of reading workshop. And here's the thing, students get to choose the books that they want to, to read. You have lots of books at all different levels and interests. And instead of expensive consumable workbooks that do little to help students progress as readers and writers, you have a reading log or a journal, which is something as simple as a piece of paper and a pencil and a notebook where they are responding. This gives you a much better sense of your students as readers and writers, by the way, as well. Here's the idea. You want them to respond aesthetically. You want to have these types of questions. And here are all examples of aesthetic response journal prompts that you can use. And these are questions uh, for which all students can be successful, but all students can be reading different books and they can all respond to one or two of these. In reading workshops, I see teachers generally put one or two of these on the board each day. Eventually, students learn how to respond and they don't need these prompts at all. Now, the journal is not to keep track of whether they're comprehending or not, although you do get a good sense of that. It's to record their thoughts, extend their thinking. And as a teacher, I can look at three to five of these a day. I can respond to them, write on them, create a dialogue with students in the journal and have a much better sense of my student as a reader and writer than I would with some stinking end of the unit tests. Conferences, generally three a day or so, students sign up, they talk with you no more than five minutes or so in length. Tell me about what you're reading. What's the favorite part? All right, why don't you read a chapter? All right, so you listen to them read. In the reading conference, you have very personal contact with each one of your students every two weeks or so, and you're taking notes as you have this conference. And again, gives me a much better sense of that student as a reader than some stinking end of the unit tests. Here are some examples of uh, pre-reading conferences, and I like to have them posted on a board so students can begin to know what to think about before they come and conference with me. And again, this is just to provide you with an overview of what reading workshop is. By no means do I think that you are experts, but it gives you a sense of the structure so that you can learn more. And choice of reading is at the heart of reading workshop. Choice is the most powerful motivator. Think about it. If you and I went to the library and people assigned us what books we had to read, I wouldn't go to the library. I get to choose what books I want to read. All right, that's an overview of the third approach, reading workshop.